To explore the previous and next tutorial, click on the relative title. Welcome in this new tutorial, where we will be learning about the various distillation calculation methods that Aspen uses. We will be completing the separation of our acetone methyl isobutyl ketone streams based on one of the simplified distillation methods, DSTW, and one of the more rigorous distillation calculation methods, RADFRAC. From these, we will be able to compare the results of the two distillation methods. Aspen has multiple unit operations options for completing distillation problems based on the complexity of the user's application. Open up your existing Aspen simulation and click on the Separators tab in the Equipment Model Library. In this tab, you will see the first option that users can choose for completing a distillation process, that is SEP2. This unit operation can be used to model separation processes with only two possible outlet streams. This process can be used to simulate distillations, but it doesn't provide the level of detail that is available when using some of the other distillation options. Some key variables it doesn't consider include the number of trays and the reflux ratio. For this reason, this option is not recommended except as a very general screening process. Now select the Columns tab in the Equipment Model Library. You will notice a number of distillation columns options. This tutorial will focus on introducing you to the three general distillation choices. DSTW, this one, and RADFRAC. The other six unit operation choices complete much more rigorous calculation than we require for an application and they are intended for use in more difficult separation and specific applications. The DSTW unit operation is designed for single feed to product distillation processes. This column completes calculation using Gillilands, Winds and Underwoods methods for calculation of stage and reflux ratios. These calculations are completed based on two assumptions, constant molar overflow and constant relative volatilities. For a specified product recovery, both light and heavy, the DSTW column first estimates the minimum number of stages and the minimum reflux ratio, and then it calculates the either the required reflux ratio or the required number of theoretical stages based on the user input. During these calculations, Aspen will also estimate the optimum feed stage locations and the condenser and reboiler duties. Finally, when the calculations are complete, Aspen can produce tables and plots of the reflux ratio stage profile. When completing complicated simulations later in your career, you could use this column to get a quick idea about a process and use its results as inputs to a more detailed simulation. The this one unit operation is also designed for a single feed to product distillation process. However, this column calculates product compositions based on the Edmister approach. Again, the calculations are completed based on the assumptions of constant molar overflow and constant relative volatilities. We will not be using this option. The final general distillation unit operation is the RADFRAC column. This distillation unit completes much more rigorous calculations than the other two methods and can be used to simulate absorption, stripping, extractive distillation and azeotropic distillation for solids, liquids and gases. This column can also be used for highly non-ideal liquid solutions or processes with an, an ongoing chemical reaction. Finally, the RADFRAC column can have multiple feed and product streams including pump around streams, and it can simulate columns with trays, random picking or structured picking. In the last Aspen homework, we adjusted our design specification input in tutorial 5 to achieve a water purity of 95%. We will keep this updated specification in our ongoing simulation, so if you didn't complete the homework in the last tutorial, do so now. 
The first update we will make to our simulation is the addition of another mixer which combines the two streams of acetone and methyl isobutyl ketone from the two flash separators that we added in the previous tutorial. At this point save your Aspen simulation under two names. We will use one version to complete a distillation with the STWW distillation column and we will use the other version to complete the simulation with the Radfrag column. I would suggest saving them with names that indicates which distillation method is being used. Now select the Columns tab in the Equipment Model Library and place a DSTW column into the Process Flow Sheet window. Connect the product stream from the new mixer to the column and add in two product streams where Aspen indicates they are required. We will also be adding in a third product stream off of the condenser to account for any free water product that can be separated from within the condenser. Rename the streams and columns as you like. Now open up the data browser window. You will notice that we are only required to update our data input in the blocks tab. Open up the appropriate option for the distillation column. For this simulation, we will be inputting the reflux ratio, the key component recoveries and the tower pressures. For our purposes, we will assume that the tower has no pressure drop through it. However, we will set the condenser and reboiler pressures to 50 psi. We will start with an input reflux ratio of 1.5, but we, we will be varying this value to try and get our desired product purity. The component recovery values that are input are equal to the amount of each component in the distillate divided by the amount of each component in the feed. For this reason, a recovery of 99% for acetone and 1% for the methyl isobutyl ketone are not unreasonable if our distillation tower is operating well. For our benefit, we would also like Aspen to produce a table of reflux ratio vs the total number of calculated theoretical trays. This uh, can be easily done by selecting the Calculation Options tab, check the box corresponding to this calculation now. At this point our simulation is complete, reinitialize and rerun our simulation. If you look closely at your results, you will notice that we do not achieve the desired 90% purity of acetone in this simulation. The stream table from my simulation is shown here. My simulation only achieved an acetone purity of 88%. We can examine the reflux ratio profile for our distillation column at this time. This can be done by opening up data browser window and selecting the blocks tab and the distillation block. Under this tab there is an option labeled result. Open up this window and then select the tab at the top entitled reflux ratio profile. If you were designed this tower you could use the information in this table to determine the most cost effective design for your distillation column. Each tray will add to the equipment cost, while the increased reflux adds to the operating costs of the column. We will use some of this information in our input for the Radfrag column. Because we did not achieve the desired product purity, we will now write a design spec to try and reach our goal. Under the Flow Sheeting Options tab, select Design Spec and add a new one. This spec will be the calculation of the mass fraction of acetone in the acetone product stream. We will try to achieve our desired 90% of weight by varying the molar reflux ratio between 0.5 and 5. The reflux ratio is a block var of the block dist we can use a tolerance of 0.5% for this specification. If you don't remember how to do this, refer to tutorial number 5. After you have input your design spec, rerun your simulation. In doing so, you should get an error that your Aspen simulation did not converge. 
close this error message because of the simplification that are used in this type of distillation column, the purity level of our product is not affected by the reflux ratio. This can be confirmed by looking at the convergence tab in the data browser window. The solver file should have a red X through it. Opening up this option and selecting the spec history tab will open up this window. You will notice in this window that error values shown in the table do not change as the reflux ratio does, indicating that our dependent variable value is not changing. This step was completed to provide a warning to you in your future simulation efforts. While some of the shortcut methods appear to provide a quick way to obtain results, they do not always work or provide the accuracy that is desired. For this reason, we will complete the same calculations with the RADFRAG column to see if the results are any different. Close your simulation with the DSTW distillation column and open up the second version that you should have saved earlier in this tutorial. Add in a RADFRAG distillation column and three product streams as we did earlier. Your process flow sheet should again look similar to this. Now open up the data browser window and the blocks option. As you can see, this column requires a lot more input than the previous column. In order to compare the two distillation methods, we must input identical values into this input window wherever possible. In the configuration tab, select a total condenser and change the valid phase to vapor liquid free water condenser. Input a reflux ratio of 1.5. In order for us to input a specified product recovery, we must change one of the operating specification to the option distillate to feed ratio. However, this option is different than that for the STW column and we must select the specific components that we are specifying the recovering of. To do this, hit the feed basis button, move Axeton from the available list to the selected list under the components box and then hit the close button. Now we have a recovery of 99% which refers to Axeton. At this point we have input all of the data that was required of us for the DSTW column. But in this case Aspen still requires more data. You might remember looking at the reflux ratio to theoretical tray profile in the previous column simulation. In this profile Aspen has calculated that 10 theoretical trays were required for a reflux ratio of 1.49. For this reason, we will input 10 trays into this simulation. At this point, the input for the configuration tab should be complete and your window should look like this. Under the streams tab, we need to input the location of the feed stream. We will put the feed at the middle stage of the column. Tray 5. In addition, your Axeton stream should say first liquid, your water stream should say free water, and your methyl isobutylketone stream should say liquid. This completes the stream stub input. You might notice that the tray corresponding to each product stream is shown in this window. If we add any side draws from our tower or additional feeds, we would need to input which tray they occur from or to in this window. In the final input tab pressure, we use the same assumption that we used in the DSTW simulation, no pressure drop. Again, we will simulate a distillation column that is operating at 15 psi. Input this as the operating pressure at stage 1. At this point, our required input is again complete and we are ready to run our simulation. You will notice that this initial simulation actually calculates a worse purity for our Axeton product than that which was obtained with the previous distillation column. 
For this reason, we will again try to input a design spec to see if we can achieve our desired 19% purity. Input the same design spec that we used in the last distillation simulation and then reinitialize and rerun your simulation. This time your simulation should converge with an accent on weight percent of 90%. As discussed in tutorial number 2, we should now check our results to make sure that they are reasonable. We will also check some of the operating parameters for the distillation column. If you look at the run control panel, you will notice that the second design spec that we used took 5 iterations, which is quite reasonable. Now open up the data browser window and look closely at the results for the radfrac column. So we can go also in block, distillation, and these are the results. You can select the appropriate unit under the blocks option. This window shows the final operating conditions for the distillation column that were calculated by Aspen. You can see in this window that our final molar reflux ratio you can also see the required condenser cooling duty. If you switch to the reboiler bottom stage option, you can see the required heat input into this column as well. If you select the balance tab at the top of the screen, you can see the overall heat and material balances for the column. You can also see the relative difference in the values. Under the profiles option, Aspen presents you with a summary of the operating condition for this simulation. In this tab, you can see a breakdown of the liquid and vapor flow rate from each tray. You can also see on this table the heat balance and the temperature profile. Under the compositions tab, at the top of the screen, you can see a profile of each of the components throughout the column. You can also plot them, for example, using the plot wizard, the composition of all the components in mole in the bubble phase during the column. We have successfully completed this tutorial. Please explore the other video clicking here on the screen. Thank you. For further information, you can send an email or leave a message on YouTube. See you in the next tutorial. Bye!